Hi everyone and welcome to this short video on adding a Twitter feed to your Google site. Well it's been an interesting journey but I think we finally got one that's going to work out pretty good. Special thanks uh, out there to uh, Johan Paul for putting together a really nice tutorial which we'll take you to in just a moment but there's a couple of things I found that uh, might be of interest to you as you start to go through this particular tutorial. Uh, first of all it's mostly for a PC audience thus he's using and referring to notepad to create a very important .xml file that you'll need to make this Twitter feed work. For you Mac users you might like to download a free uh, text editor called Text Wrangler. It worked out really well for me and it's pretty easy to use you just have to go to your app store and download it to your computer and uh, and use that. So just a little heads up for you Mac users. The second thing I found too is that the instructions are primarily for a personal Google account and a uh, personal Google site that uh, may not be in an apps domain. So if you uh, are a teacher and you're in a Google apps domain and are using a Google site, there's a, a little extra step that you'll have to take to uh, make this work. In short, you'll need to have a private Google site at your disposal where you're going to place this file and then you're going to refer to it in your uh, domain site. And I'll walk through that in the video that we're preparing here for that process. So let's take a quick look how that all works. Well, the first thing you're going to do is to go to uh, Johan's site uh, and walk through the uh, tutorial on getting started here. And he's going to have you create a .xml file before you can begin. It's really quite simple you're going to need a couple of pieces of code. And the first piece of code that you're going to need is this, the developer's code. All you need to do is to copy that, open up your text editor, whether it's Notepad or Text Wrangler. In this case, I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to bring up my Text Wrangler. And I'm going to paste it right there in our untitled text. Notice here is where we're going to paste the Twitter code. Let's go back to our web browser. Let's go to our Twitter account. And once you log into your Twitter account, you should be able to go to the gearbox and go to settings. Under settings, you're going to have a menu off the left hand side, and this one's called widgets. And under widgets is where you're going to be able to create and manage Twitter widgets. Here's our create button, but honestly, we'll go to the one that I created for myself because they all look the same. I'll just click on edit. And you can create a widget for any uh, Twitter feed. In this case, it's going to be mine. So I put my Twitter name down, have a couple of check boxes. I can actually put the size of that right here. I can change the color, dark or light. But once I've tweaked this a little bit and saved my changes, it's going to give me this Twitter code for the widget. So I want to make sure that I uh, copy all of that and I'm going to take that and go back to my text editor and I'm going to paste it right where it says to paste it right there and boom and so now all I need to do is to save this file uh, to my hard drive because I'm going to be using it in just a moment and then I want to upload it to my Google site all right so just go to File and Save and save this with any name that you want as long as it ends in .xml. All right. Let's go to a website now that we've got that file created. Here's a little sandbox site that we're going to be inserting a Twitter feed. Here's one that's already been put in, so let's replicate that a little bit for you. How was that done? Well, the first thing we need to do is to bring up that .xml file. So we go to More. We manage site, and under manage site, we're going to find something called attachments. You select attachments. This is going to be where you're going to be able to upload that file that you created. You just click on upload and locate it on your hard drive wherever you saved it. And once you upload it, here we go. Here's a little text wrangler one that we just created just a moment ago. All we need to do is to go over to the download button once you have it uploaded and right click or control click for you Mac folks and we want to copy the link address it may also say copy link location in some web browsers we want to copy that link address alright that's the first big step 
Let's go back to our site. Let's go back to the page in question, and now we're going to edit that page. We click on the Edit Page button. We place our cursor where we want that feed to go. I'm going to put it here on the right-hand side. We go to Insert, and we select More Gadgets. Now, instead of selecting one of the already pre-made gadgets here, we're going to click on Add Gadget by URL. And we're going to highlight this area here, and we're going to paste the URL that we just copied a moment ago. And here we go. We want to make sure, though, that we eliminate the ending here so it just reads at the end .xml. Looks good. Now, if everything works, when we click on Add, we should have a little box here that gives you an opportunity to change some of the configurations or looks. Let's just leave it the way it is to see what it's going to look like. Let's click OK. Of course, we're not going to see our gadget until we save our page. And once we save our page, we can now see that Twitter feed. Now we can always go back and we can change the dimensions, the height and the width maybe to make it a little bit more like this if you would like. So in short, that's how you place your Twitter feed onto a personal Google account and a personal Google site. Now the issue here though, let's dive over to another account. So I'm actually in a completely different Google account. It happens to be a school account or a school domain. And I want to place a Twitter feed on this site. Well, to do that, I have to take one extra step from what we just did a moment ago. The first thing I need to do is, of course, to create that docs.xml file. And once you have that XML file created, you need to first, and I'm going to go back, you need to first upload that file to a private account. That's because uh, domain sites are a little bit more secure than personal sites. So we need to put that file here on a personal or public site. So to do that, all I do is to go to More, Manage Site, and I go to My Attachments. When I go to My Attachments, I can upload a .xml file that I want to put on my domain site. And here's one here that I've uploaded. And now I'm going to grab that all-important URL. So I'm going to copy the link address. I'm done there. I can go back to the site if I want to. Now I'm going to move to another web browser here. Keep in mind, I am now in a, pub, uh, a, a school domain site. And I want to insert that Twitter feed on this page. Well, to do that, all I need to do now is to edit the page, place the cursor where I want that gadget to go, go to Insert, more gadgets, add gadget by URL. Now keep in mind, this is the URL of the gadget that is located in my personal account. Remember to eliminate the ending, so just .xml file is showing. Click on the add, and if everything is OK, you're going to have a little description box come up. Click OK. And it will not appear until we save our page. There we go. So that Twitter timeline begins to appear. And of course, I can go back in and I can tweak that a little bit to make it a little bit more pleasing to the eye. Now, the main difference here is I am not uploading that XML file to this site because it's inside a school domain. I need to upload it to a personal or a private one. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you found this video helpful. Have a great day.